Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Morning Jumpstart. My name is Jason Meyer, and uh, yeah, I, that's right. It is St. Patty's Day, so good morning, everybody. I see Claudia and Tom and Susan. Good job. All right. So um, today's going to be a yummy one. We're going to get, we've got, um, we've just got three we're going to look at today. And, um, well, let's just see what happens. Let's not talk out of turn. Let's just see what happens. But uh, I'm, I'm excited about our subject matter today and what we're going to cover. So uh, first up, we're going to have Sue. We'll have a look at Sue. And then after Sue, we're going to have a look at Tom. And we'll finish up the show with Susan. So if you guys are out there and hanging around or want to re-watch, that's the order that will be done in. All right, we got any other business we need to take care of? Um, <clears throat> as things change and grow, again, if you're just finding us on YouTube or you've been following and you want to continue to follow along, um, make sure to check out the online school. We're gonna, some of this stuff may show up there our YouTube and our Facebook may change a, a little bit over. And so these programs will continue for a little while, but um, eventually on these platforms, what we put out may differ a little bit. So if you do enjoy what you see here, please make sure to check out the website and uh, that'll get you right to the online school if you look for it. All right, well, I don't know about you, but I love nothing more than to get to work. So if everybody got settled in, you'll have to excuse me today. The allergies are a little bit high. <clears throat> so there may be a little voice clearing. I'll try to mute if I've got a cough or anything. But uh, that's all uh, the little added color in my face is this morning. Just a little added allergies. All right, so let us get what we need. Where's our dance partner? There we go, our trusty iPad. Ah, doesn't everybody feel better now? Miss Cindy's here. Cindy is here. That means she's got the kid off to school. And well, no, it doesn't. She's pretty mobile. I don't know what that means. So Sue, my gosh, what has happened to you? Just like, it's like overnight you got it. Kaboom. Overnight, overnight, overnight. So, we have to start by saying, first off, this is tremendous pros, uh, progress, Sue. Tremendous. The values are working. It, there's clarity that, that hasn't been there before. So, yes, 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 yes. Okay, but this is so going so good and you've got momentum. Let's talk about what's next. Because I think, you know, we're just at the start of this. Where are we, Wednesday? So this is our first week painting. We have another week after this. So the idea with our paintings is to see just how far we can take them. Just how far we can take them. So I'm gonna come back out here for just a second, take a bit of liberty, because part of what we're seeing here is glare. So let's come up here and just gonna take what's here. And down here on the bottom, so that's going to read, I'm going to imagine, something a lot closer to that. It looks like it's warmer over there. Let me be some highlights on that table, I think, on the edge. I don't think there's... I could be wrong. Let me know if I'm wrong. But a lot of that looks like glare to me. Um, as well as... And it's not a big deal, but this looks so good. It looks like there's some highlights in the shadow that I'm just going to take out. Right? 
So if those are scratches or something, if I'm misreading that, you know, on your next pass, just flatten that out. But that's going to help. And now when we look at this, I see... I clearly see three things. Okay. I see that. So to be more specific, right, that shape. that shape and then the background okay you see the, those big simple value shapes that's what gives paintings power not only paintings but anytime you're working in mass instead of line this is the power of mass it is that immediate visual impact okay so what I want to do now is I want to take this down to kind of postage stamp very very small disorient it and now that you see what I'm looking at take another look okay so Not only are there clean, clean, clear shapes, but they're different sizes. They're different nature. Do you, can you guys see that? So if, if we had, say, just a circle, three visible circles of the same size equally spaced apart, that's not gonna be as visually interesting as these three different shapes of varied shapes, very literally varied shapes and sizes. Miss Sue, Miss Sue, Miss Sue. Hi, hi, hi. So if you missed the first part, you'll have to go back, but I'm really, really, really happy with the clarity, the visual clarity that you've got here. You've come a million miles and this is awesome, but we still have like a week and a half to go. So we're gonna talk about what's next. And we were looking at the E's forehead, the background, and the book with his hand, the open book with his hand as three distinct clear shapes and the visual clarity that you have with that. So I hope everybody can see that clearly and what I want you to notice is why am I doing this weird thing of turning this around and shrinking it? Because I want you to realize that the orientation does not affect the visual clarity. So one of the reasons we disorient the canvas or hold a mirror up to it or flip it back and forth is so that we disorient what we think we know in the images we know so that we can see if there's actual visual clarity with the values all right let's see hopefully I wasn't too long-winded on that but it's just so important so important um, to see that so what's next what's next I think my immediate suggestion or look would be, and again, if it's different in, the, in life, you know, go from life. Sometimes in the photograph, some of these things are lost, but at least in the photograph, there seems to be a little too much equality among the impact, okay? The, and I'm just talking visual impact here. So what I'm gonna do today is talk about ways that we might keep these clear shapes going while we change the uh, actual visual impact of them so they're not quite so equal.
Okay, so down to the nitty gritty. Down to, and I am just tickled with this, Sue. I'm just so, I, and it's precisely because of the visual clarity, right? I, I, the, and that's the visibility. Maybe that first principle, visibility, should be more about uh, visual clarity. Visual clarity. Okay, so let's see here. What if I thought about this guy well at least his head as a cube so then if we thought about the nose oops sorry guys my light decided to freak out a little bit there we go <clears throat> light coming this way then we're going to be shadowed under here we're going to be shadowed over here and then what's that nose well that nose protrudes off of that so that's an underplane All right, then we have a front plane a side plane and a side plane Um, the eyes are like cups, the eye sockets. So these planes are going down like that. So in other words, when we think about this structurally or how we're built or how we visually have to show this, so within this visual clarity that you've show, um, set up, what I'm moving on to now is making each of those spots that are visually clear more three-dimensional making sure that there's depth in those or adding form to them okay and the reason i'm talking about these planes like i am is because that's what's going to instruct us on how to draw, not draw, but, um, well, yeah, draw. One last thing I want to point out here is we can also think about this as an egg, right? And it helps to be able to think about these things in more than one way, right? The egg and, and the cube they're really just thinking tools because the truth is the human head is somewhere in between the two of them but with it being circular and when we go from light to dark what happens well this has got to be a soft edge and we've got a super hard edge there so I want to slow down here for just a second because a lot of things are happening here and Sue, you're nailing a bunch of them. And I don't really want you to change that. And what I'm talking about specifically here is paint quality. If we look at the paint quality in the background, look, I can still see the weave of the canvas there. So that's really, really thin. And then all of this paint seems a bit flatter and thinner. And then, man, we're going to party town up there. Mountainsville, Alpine skiing, right? That, that paint is getting thicker and juicier and ooh, so big. So you're right on doing that. But even as you do that, we've got to be sensitive about the nature of each of these turns and some of those planes okay so 
that right there, just softening that edge a bit is gonna go a long way. Okay. So, the other thing I wanted to point out that for is for our light dark pattern. So let's come up here and it's great that we've got all this light up here, but I think we, we could use a little more shadow to be more descriptive. If our eyes are balls, then this side of the ball is shadowed, right? And it's a cup, so that's falling under. So that's gonna be shadowed like that. This ball, more of that's gonna fall into shadow. And you see just by doing that, and let's just see if I can't soften this edge up here. Just a little bit. Bring that over. Right, you can have highlight on the glasses and, and dark behind even if you want. And then part of this too is I think we need the cast shadow showing that we're going over a rounded surface. So I hope you can see that starts to add a little dimension there. So you've got such clarity. What we want to do is how can we go back now? Lights coming. Lights coming in from down there. Right, so if that finger turned under Right, it's facing a, that's facing away from the light. Facing away from the light, facing away from the light. Light coming in the tip of the fingers, facing away from the light, and then there'd be shadow underneath. Right? And then as this turned over, a little shadow on that finger, little shadow, little shadow, and then this hand's turning over like that. So again, I don't want to do it to the point that we lose visual clarity. And then if we get right on these edges here, what will happen is the hand and everything will start coming more alive. Now I see some color and some blanch, so I see you're already thinking that way. I want to encourage you to go, go with that. Um, with the book, for instance, maybe the top plane is that light, and then we get a front plane of those, you know, the sides of those pages there. And those would all be the same, the same plane, so to speak. Right? And then you guys watch this because it's really amazing the difference this makes. So, Sue, you did absolutely right. Visual clarity first we can see the big pieces. But really watch, on this book, what we wanna do is, let's really show, well, let's really decide, it, you know, is that light coming like that? Or is that light coming like that? Why does that matter? Well, it matters because if it's coming the first way, then anything facing this way is gonna have more light. If it's coming the second direction, well then, any, see what happens there? So then, is that all lit up? Let's see. Let's see, so let's just try it each way and see what works, huh? I particularly like this. Why would you think that? Why would you? Right, so how can we take this? So we're up here without a doubt. He's looking this way and it looks like you're already on, 
make this because it's facing that way kind of the wrist the most then we might hit some knuckles or something up here with a little more right and then that points to that I, I think that's brilliant and then again make sure that at some point over here a little light gets onto the table too and I think yeah 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 all right so let's have a look let's have a look let's have a look and the light on a table doesn't have to be a lot but it'll expand the painting right? and, and maybe there's even a little light over here on the table it doesn't have to be as much and then like I said before let me get rid of this glare because that's not fair to Sue Sue's done too good of a job to let us be seeing glare here And then the last thing I might do is, well, how are we doing on time? Okay, we're okay. We're okay on time. So let's, let's come up here with this hand. And I'm just gonna turn it a little bit more. And I'm gonna turn it a little bit more partly to make it a little quieter. So do you guys remember me saying, okay, we've got it, but now it's not one, but three. It's not three, but seven. It's not seven, but 15. That's pretty much what I'm doing here now is I'm taking this one visual shape that she had and I'm thinking, okay, so how can I keep this a strong visual shape but make it more. Okay, so, so I hope that that makes sense. By just giving it form, I don't necessarily want to take part. My, my shadows and my fingers kind of split those two lights into one. I'm gonna find a way to reconnect them. If, if I'm you, I'm not gonna do it in here. And then with the background, I love how you're handling the background, but what would happen Let's see, like in our darkest spots, in our darkest spots, or in our lightest spots, I say. I just wanna take some of this. Just go a hair deeper everywhere. A hair deeper, and let's see. And what that should do, what I'm gonna bet it does, as you said, remember how we started this saying, okay, now we're gonna get just a little bit of variety between the three. And if we remember that there's a lot of psychological weight in the eyes, then we could actually make that book a tad bit lighter and brighter and more visibly, visually strong, technically, but when we include the psychological weight of the eyes, we'll still go to the eyes first. 
Okay, there's a little balance, and that's some high grade stuff, Sue, but I know you know exactly what I'm talking about. And what I have found is if I can get the students just thinking those thoughts, it may take a couple of stumbles, just like when you're learning to ride a bike. Uh, uh. But keep going there and you're gonna be up and running. Okay, so let me finish this background and then we'll move on to the next one. But again, Sue, if you didn't hear anything else, you are nailing this. The visual clarity is amazing on here, right? Probably the most visually clear painting I've ever seen of yours, at least in this style with me. Again, for you guys who don't know, Sue is, you know, a, a good artist in a completely different style, and she's just been willing to kind of let all that go to learn this other style, and just huge kudos, huge, huge kudos to that. So I, I'm being a little rough here, but all I'm doing is, again, taking a little bit of the impact out of that background so that, our, so that it's still a clear shape, still a clear shape, but just not, doesn't quite have the visual impact that it did. And I'm realizing now I probably should have separated this into layers so we could see the effects, but hey. Woulda, coulda, shoulda. What? Right? Huh? All right. So let's come back down. You see how it's just a, a little bit stronger? And then, again, we could develop a little more around the face. And last thing I'm gonna say here, just because this is so fun, because it's so good, you've got everything there, you're ready to go crazy. Should I, one more layer? Let's one more layer of this. So now let's, let's celebrate, Sue. I think you've come so far, so long that we should celebrate. So let's celebrate. Celebration time, come on. Let's celebrate with a little woohoo. And now again, I, I can see on here, some of this may not be showing up in the photo. It looks like you got some thick red paint there. So it looks like you're already into this idea. But again, what I would do is just, you know, can you push it? So not one, but two. Not one, but two. Wait, 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 what? Not. And then I believe, I believe, I don't believe, I know. I know, because I'm a little bit jelly. I'm a little bit jelly. Had had a really nice fancy black band right there. Behind. Okay, so it's a little unharmonized there with me going crazy. But I hope that makes sense. Let's take a look. See, so if we think about that half, that background is we can still have visual clarity there, but more of a half step. Okay. And then on where we are clear, we're going to develop some form, like on the book and the hand a little bit. Right. Still keep it visually clear, but give a little side, a little front, a little bit of form, a little bit of interest. Right. And again, on the face, what I'm doing is, again, is giving that a little bit of form. Giving that a little bit of form. I, you've got the order of the light, air, shadow, right? Again, that hard edge, though, I think gives us a little problem.
Okay, but Sue, man, I'm, I wish this was my painting to work on. I wish this was my painting to work on. A week and a half? Yes, 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 yes. All right, oh, look at this. Sorry, I missed all these conversations. I was so into your painting, Sue. I was so into your painting. Yeah, did I? Don't even know. Such an expressive style. Yeah, she's. Sue's got a lot to say. Sue's got a lot to say. Here I am. Yep. Thanks. Yep. Very nice. Hi, Wendy. Wonderful, Sue. Yes, yes, yes. So much. Yeah, right? Yeah, it is fun. The eye path idea, great. Oh, great, 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 great. I figured you were onto that. I mean, there was a reason that hand was there. Oh, yeah. So, we're using the Neo Miguel from Gamblin, and we were using um, the actual real stuff, the Marge before. You can go back to that if you want. Uh, I think it's the Old Masters Medium. I was making it for a while and selling it to you guys, but it just got, I got too busy. I got too busy. Um, and it got a little expensive for people. But if you like it, go back to it, because there's nothing, oof, it's nice. It's nice, it's nice, it's nice. Sue, 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 it's so good to spend the morning with you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So uh, I can't wait to see this one again. Good, good, good job. All right, let's. What else do we got this morning, man? What else? I actually feel sorry for Tom this morning to follow that show. Oof. But look, he does it. He does it. Now, from experience, I'm gonna guess. And it's funny on my iPad; it looks richer even than on my screen. But if you're seeing this anywhere close to I'm seeing it. I'm gonna guess this isn't, the skin tone's not that light, that this is a little overexposed, it's a little bit richer. Um, but still, as I work on this, I'll change it. But don't just change it because I changed it on the photograph. Make sure your painting is matching or your painting very may, may well already be doing what I'm asking you to do. And in that case, you don't need to do it. Okay, so whenever I talk to you guys, make sure you realize that always go off the actual painting. So you might even wanna have your painting there and as you're looking at the screen go, oh, that doesn't read, that, yeah, it's not nearly that light. My skin tone's much richer, right? My, my hat looks much redder. My background's not that light. Man, it's just the photography, all right? So again, always go off of your work, right? That's the thing the buyer's gonna be looking at. It's your work, not the photograph you're working off of or anything else, okay? Mr. Tom, Mr. Tom, Mr. Tom, Mr. Tom. You just continue to get better and better and better and better. I don't know how you do it. And again, this is the start of this. This is the start of this. So, but since this is a show about what's next, I can't just be nice. I can't just be nice. So, all right, Tom and I have been together a long time. So if this seems harsh to anybody, it's not. It's just what's next, and they like that. And and by the way, Susan, we're on going to be on to Susan's next. Um, I'm going to really talk to you about the exact same thing but it's gonna be in different places. Okay, so right now let's talk about, I want you guys to be more and and less descript, wait, what? More and less descriptive. Well, what? What, what do I mean by that? What, I mean, it's important to know what I mean. Well, what I mean is, this is pretty good, but we need this and this to read together. Okay? And if 
we get, believe it or not, even a sharper edge here, a shadow from the glasses onto the nose. So we're not going black to light skin tone, we're going shadowed skin tone to light skin tone. And it is a cast shadow, so it'll be a hard edge. But I'm also gonna use this to really show how this wraps around. I'm gonna try to get a soft edge here. Then again, on this side, I gotta be descriptive. Very descriptive. And then if we have a sh shadow over here, let me ask you something. Do we have a start or a hard edge there? Yes, we've got a hard edge. And this is a what? Well, we know the order. It goes hard, soft. What's the next, what's the next thing? What's the, it's hard. Right, so, and we gotta go with the shape of the nose. And then when does that turn towards the cheek? Make sure that we see that. Even if these values are so close that the viewer can't really even pick them up. I've exaggerated the color and stuff here so we can see these exact movements I'm making. They, they feel that consistency, okay? Again, I, I know guys, it sounds like I'm being very, very harsh, but I want you to look at something that feels like a pretty straight line there. And so even if you do get all of this warm, blanched highlight right, but you've got a straight line running across, it kills the topography. So we've got to be very careful with those lines. We've got to come down the nose. Then we've got to turn and go across the cheek. So that means we've got to have a corner, a change. Why do we need a corner? Because how structural, that's not structural enough. But the hard part in art is degree. Meaning, it's not gonna be round, and it's not gonna be a straight coin. It's gotta be somewhere in between. So what if we just made this turn really quick right here, and then just made sure this direction, so we have that, And then where's our next thing? Well, it, there's a corner over here where we go from the front to the side. And yeah, you're right. It does look like this in the photo. We cannot paint it like that. We cannot let those glasses go sideways or, or up. The reason being is those things are not just those things. But those things are drawing our head. And how we place this cube matters. And on this cube, we're seeing the bottom of the cube not the top of the cube. Okay, so what that means is this is the front of the face and then as we turn around we're going to drop down. We've got a... How do I know? Those three lines told me. Okay, and the problem isn't that the face isn't a perfect cube, 
right? But this kicks out a little bit, right? It's not a right, and this kicks out a little bit. So one needs to be air, one needs to be light, and one needs to be shadow. But we've got to get these structures right or it just doesn't quite feel right. So I hope that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. Again, I know this sounds really tough, but this is, this is where we are. This is where Tom is. I, you know, he's so good. If I'm not tough, he's not going to learn anything. And these things will make all the difference. They will make all the difference. So, but, 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 I said to be more and less descriptive. What does this have to be? Well, if we're very, very descriptive, say here in the center of the face, say, with the glasses going across the front of the box, also describing the nose, right? So what is that box? Well, the box tells us where the bottom of the glasses go, where the top of the glasses go. They tell us those directions, the middle of the glasses. And when we get to this side of the glasses, we've got to come down. But we don't have to take them by the hand and walk them all the way through there. We can give that, all that information with that one corner. In other words, I want you to be more descriptive and I want we, just to be super accurate on the bigness of things and how everything tracks that bigness. And then the less descriptive comes from I'm going to want all of this to be very clear. I don't want that to be very clear, but, but when we're dealing with vagueness, when we're talking about vagueness, vagueness cannot, cannot destroy the feel. of structure. Okay, we've talked a lot a long time about how values have their lanes. Well, it turns out that vagueness has a lane too. And if it gets to where things start feeling soupy and not solid, that's no good. Because even through a fog, right, there's a solidity to the tree. Right or whatever, you can see there's a feeling of solidity. It's of masked solidity, right? But that tree doesn't look like I could just run through it. It may be invisible to me, but as I start to see it, I can sense the density of it, okay? So feel into that. Again, that's a feel thing. So that's what I mean by being more and less descriptive. And we can also talk about that in terms of, in terms of color, okay? But I wanna do that, I'll hit it real quick here, but then let's talk about that maybe a little bit more on Susan's. So, the idea of more or less descriptive, again, I have a feeling Tom's already here in person, 
his painting is already doing what I'm about to ask it to do and that this is a photograph but I could be wrong I could be wrong but all I can respond to is a photograph here so what I want to do with that skin tone is again make it darker and a little bit richer You guys feel that? Now, when I first do that, this feels way too dark. But once I establish this and flatten it out, and if air is darker and shadow is darker, and those relationships still hold, then it will read as light because you've told the viewer this is light and it's followed those certain certain guidelines. Am I taking too much personal time? I'm sorry. I'm just... This is what I live for. This is what I live for, just to watch this color go, spread, live its life, do its thing. Right? To come into its own. And again, I'm, I'm way oversimplifying here, but we'll get the point. descriptive right show, this has got to show the roundness of that eye and you know, again I know some of this might be now that drew the line but this isn't about drawing and this is like the deepest space here so what if I just left a little bit of that to where the shadow can then it doesn't have to come to that line right that gives it a sur sort of depth what else is there just a single no there's always a crease too So look as I get more descriptive in that one eye, I need to get less and less and less descriptive in the other eye. And that's the same principle as if we get more and more descriptive on this corner, we can get less and less and less descriptive in some of these other places, right? And then if, again, we're more descriptive here, then a lot of that can disappear, right? And maybe the only thing, you know, you'd see a little bit of these glasses at the top, but the only thing over here you see maybe is this little highlight in the corner. Maybe that highlight defines basically the whole, this side of the glasses and that side of the glasses and that side of the glasses. Maybe that highlight is visibly the only thing you see. If you have enough clarity here, and here, nobody's ever going to feel the difference. They're going to feel that those glasses are there and that they're clear. Okay, so I, again, that's some high-level stuff there, but more descriptive and less descriptive. How's that for a description? Huh? Like I said, do what I say, not what I do. <laughs> 
All right. Great, great, great. Look at all the love, Tom. Thank you. You're welcome, Sue. You're welcome. Yeah, Tom. Tom's establishing some nice control of the values, and it makes all the difference. It makes all the difference. I agree. I agree. Beautiful, Tom. <laughs> the ear. Uh oh. Sue's getting fresh. She wants to nibble on the ear. I don't know. <laughs> the ear, the ear, the ear. That's funny. Nice, nice. All right, you got it, Tom. Great. I, I knew I knew you were there, buddy. I, again, I, I, this might be really small, and so some of what I said could be harder, but still, just the intention. Let me be clear here and let go. Let me not quite finish that stroke. Let me just let that stroke send them in that direction and then it kind of can melt into the other stuff. But I have enough, enough structure here that that melting would be okay. Uh-oh. He, he went from a gangster. I talked to him about a gangster and now he's Clark Kent. He's saving everybody. I think that's a better interpretation. I like that Clark Kent there. Tom, oh, you continually impress me, buddy. Keep it up, keep it up, keep it up. You're awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, again, I you know I know some of that's there, but some of that drawing stuff. See if you can't use that to more effect. Use that to more effect. All right, guys, let's keep going. I want to give Susan her due time. And again, I mean. You continually to progress and come so far, and each time I ask you to do something, man, you get it. it it's kind of amazing at how fast. I mean, look at how that warm cool is showing up in her skin tones, right? And for anybody who, who's not sure what I'm talking about, let's just take a little, a quick second. So. We've got a great off skin tone there. Look, we've got some warm red there. It's a little bit more yellow there. It's getting more blanched out here. We're going towards a highlight there. W without those little changes, what happens, basically like you saw me do with Tom's right there, is that things start looking plastic, right? And this was, Geez, I don't know how long ago. It doesn't seem like it was very long ago. Just maybe a few weeks ago or something. Maybe it was longer than that. But if we just get this a single color without that non-color and a little form on there, these things start looking fake, like a plastic doll. Okay, so one of the things that Susan has done is she's been able to take that look of plasticity and now it's a lot more realistic kind of skin tone. So any of you guys struggling with skin tone, this, this is probably what you need. But, but, but there's lanes on that. What do I mean by that? Does that any of those changes in the skin tone take away from the impact, from the visual impact of that light skin? And the answer is no, it holds together as a nice solid one thing, but it gives away. And then we've got that background and we've got less and more in that background, that's great. And unfortunately, and it happens within everybody, that glares in that bottom left corner, you see it kind of kicking up its ugly head. That's just camera glare. So I'll, I'll take a little bit of that out, but I think we can clearly see what this is. Let me roughly take some of this out so we can get a better idea of what we're looking at. Where are we going? We need to layer up. Where's my tool? There we go. Um, so yeah, let's just take that gray there. get rid of that corner the glare on that corner okay 
Okay. I know that corner is still a little light, but hopefully that's a little bit closer to what we have. Okay. And um, so Su Susan wrote and said she's worked really hard on it, worked on it, I forget, four or five days, three, four days um, for many hours a day. So there's a lot of work with this. Um, so she was happy. I was trying to remember, but oh, I remember what it was. She didn't know where to go from here. She didn't know where to go from here. Okay, and I want to encourage you, this is, this is the most critical skill as a painter that you can pick up. To go back to what you're seeing. Okay, and I have a feeling that Susan already kind of sees this. But let's do this on a deeper level. So I think one of the things that's happening here even though it's a little softer there. Do you see what I'm pointing out, Susan? Yeah, you guys are all shining. You guys are all shining. So, but I agree. Susan's Susan's working hard, and it's it's showing. It's showing. <laughs> you guys are awesome. Spectacular, Susan. Yeah. Do you see what's happening here? So this is a little bit abstract, and that's why I'm I'm giving everybody just a second. Giving everybody just a second to see if they can see what's happening here. So now we're going to talk about, I have a feeling the first time Sue, Susan heard me say this, thought, oh my God, I'll never get to that. This is about the pace, the pace of the composition. Right? And right now what's happening is it's too fast. It's too fast. It's just too fast. If we can just slow the pace down a little bit, oof, oof, you're gonna have to call the Louvre. Tell them to make room for one more. Tell them to make room for one more. Okay, so I want you to give you guys just a second because this ultimately is about me trying to give you the ability to see this, to see this on your own. So this isn't unlike exactly what we talked about with Sue, right? Because there's so many really good things happening here. So many really good things happening. So what if, again, here we were not only more and less descriptive, but how could we slow that pace down? How could we slow that pace down? Why don't we talk about that first? Well, what if on the front side here, we're gonna be a little bit less than that background, but instead of having this shape, we made it more base this way. And so what that'll do, rather than based on that, it won't act as an accelerant to that movement. It'll act as a pausing action on that movement. And if I really wanted to kind of 
hold and slow you down, I might attach it to the edge of the canvas. I got kind of a hard edge on, can you guys see that? That hard edge in the background? Maybe a little bit of that is good, but maybe, oops. It's just too much. Maybe I could leave like just that little bitty hard edge there. And maybe a hard edge on the bottom of the back of the hat, but then a completely lost edge on the top of that hat. Can you see that difference? And then if in the same token, I brought this edge, I know this is subtle guys, I brought this edge, right, again, just getting that shape down. Now his eyes continue that way, but now the background goes a different direction. Do you see on that? And now it, it, it's still oh, just a little bit fast, so what else might we do? What would happen if we came over to this side and we got a nice ear here, we got a jawline, we got a nice neckline there, but what if we just got a little more descriptive in the rolls? Because what am I, is, is that fast or is that faster? This will slow, the top one will slow them down just a little bit. And how could I slow them down even more than that? Well, what if I was a little more interesting even with these shapes? Now, I think his Now, how can we make that one eye even stronger? How can we make that one eye even stronger? Some of you guys, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, how are we doing? Oh, we're over time already, oh my goodness. Okay, um, all right, we'll keep going. That'll be enough for another time. So let me, let me finish this. So you guys are too good, you got me too into this. This is your fault. But some of you guys are still a little bit shy on taking out details. And so this would be a less descriptive here. And what we could do to replace the description of that eye and all that in and out, hard edge, like we talked about, little turn around. around what might take the place let me just do all of that how could we well again what if instead of talking right about the little forms we went into a little bit of the bigger forms what if there was a little reflected light under here But if, like, if you just need a little bit more, look, just by adding a bit of color to that shadow, right? Th that little bit of color is gonna gonna do so much more than all the little details on the eye, because it's gonna be more attractive to the distance. And it doesn't mean that you can't have like one or two things. Like, okay, Jason, if you had one or two things in there, what might it be? 
well, what if we had a little bit darker of the eye there? We'd have to make sure that was. And then what if the white of our eye now is that dark gray? And what if, just like the edge of those glasses at the four corners, We just needed the tiniest bit of this. You see how you can start suggesting things in there and then if they're maybe was a highlight what, oh. can't put something down with the eraser there we go so you could still build things into that but just less 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 and part of that is realizing the effect of all the detail versus the effect of color, right? Color and white are a finish in themselves. It, it's very abstract and hard to understand, but like if I want more on here, if we need a little more from this eye, some color in the edge of those eyes All right. got some color in the edge of the eyes and then showing the movement of the again this may be way too small for where we're at but just this idea again that movement of that eye falling off is going to be so much more effective All right, I'm getting lost here, guys, sorry. That could be a warm red. But um, anyway, I hope that makes sense. So again, more and less descriptive, but some of it is about that abstract, abstract quality, right? The abstract quality, um, less descriptive, you know, and I see you do it. I see you do it, so this is hard. I know this is, it's a matter of degree. Can we let some of this over here just, kind of just almost go away? Just go, you know, can some of this just, This is a soft edge here as this turns under. So I could make this a bit smaller. Right. But you, you see, we've got to keep the pieces large enough so that they carry. Okay, I think I've gone way over now. Wow, what a morning. I hope you guys had as much fun as I did. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, what happened up here? Oh yeah, spectacular, Susan. Thanks, Claudia. 
yeah this is the beauty of it is the subtleness can make such a difference such a difference so you know you can't be working with 37 chains it's just too much noise and if you get down to the real heart of the matter you can affect it really really quickly one last thing is on the other side of his shoulder like we had the folds in the fabric against the light background on this near side too. Again, just make that shape a little more interesting. And it doesn't have to be louder, just like, cause that's, a, that's really fast. This is just really fast, right? The same way that we were doing that when we had that before we put that in, okay? Again, subtle abstract things, but man, call the Louvre. Oh, hello. Great. Really nice, Susan. Got it. Excellent. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for a wonderful morning. Sorry I took up a little more than time than I should have. But, I mean, this great art, it deserves, you got to give it some time and space, people. Quit doing such great stuff, and we'll quit spending so much time on it. All right. As always, uh, we'll be back very soon. Tonight is Masterworks at 7 o'clock on this very station. Hope to see you guys then. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Bye-bye.